Hey personality people, Ashley here, possibly an SXSP358, INFP, as of now that I know. I'm here to share with you an interesting topic that I came across on Enneagrammer, and it's the visual and conversational signals that will help you identify your core type, and maybe even your wing and the types in your tri-type. I've simplified the Enneagram by making a triangle and just putting the numbers around in your typical clockwise fashion. Now I want to emphasize that these signals are not indicators of your type necessarily, but they may help you determine your type. The best indicator of finding your type is examining and comparing the core fears of each type. Let's start with type two in the heart triad. Twos will give a lot of compliments they are flirty, teasing people with big smiles. You'll generally see this trend. What comes to mind is a coworker I had who at least had a wing too. Always very natural with the physical touch aspect of socializing, not afraid to kind of get in your space and be appropriate and just connect with people through physical touch. Not afraid to poke fun at you and connect with you by bantering and teasing you and always having words of affirmation of flattering always knowing the right thing to say to make you feel good about yourself. That is your type two. Next in the heart triad, we have your type three. Bright energy, nothing faded. Maybe their clothes are always sharp looking. They are just kept in good condition. And three's conversation will naturally flow to what the three can do, what the three will do, and what the three has done. Once upon a time myself, I identified as a core three. I think three was my fix within my tri-type. And it's like you're always on job interview always trying to impress people, always trying to look your best, sharing with people your accomplishments, telling people your big dreams, very type three energy. The last type in the heart triad is type four. Type four signals, typically they have their shoulders hunched over they are closed off from people. They have a vibe that they are too good for you, being arrogant. And they have a tendency to bring the topic to a negative topic in conversation or even speak in opposition to what the interviewer is bringing up. So, for example, just off the top of my head, maybe the interviewer is talking about the weather and then the four will just complain about how bad the weather could get eventually, like it's going to rain or it's too hot. And then that four might say, no, you think it's going to rain, but I think it's going to actually be completely clear that day. I mean, this is just kind of an example perhaps of 
talking against the flow of conversation and also bringing the conversation to a negative. These signals for four, I brought it up to the four Facebook group and I wanted to hear their take on it because originally I thought I was a four, but it turns out four can be really rare in the population. So even in average levels of health, if you if a person doesn't find themselves relating to these signals, they may not be a four. These are not just unhealthy signals, supposedly, but even in average levels of health. Moving on to the head triad, we have our type fives within my tri-type. Fives are in the head, speaking from logic and not saying things like I feel, but rather I think, intellectualizing their emotions. Fives are lost in their world of personal expertise, in their world of strange ideas that are not common within the population. I can think of myself, my family, my friends, they are sick of hearing about personality systems. And I'm trying to take the hint and try to find common ground with them. But if they didn't say anything, I would just talk about it all day to them. Just talk at them about this offbeat topic of personality systems. The Fives talking style is lecturing. Moving on to a very common type in the population, the type six. The type six being more prone to anxiety, even in average levels of health, are looking around. They're double checking things. I'm just thinking perhaps maybe they're just wanting to know where the exit is, seeing who's around to try to gauge the social environment. The six will always see themselves as still Jenny from the block. They're always friendly. They're not elitist at all. And the six having a difficult conflicted relationship with authority, trying to figure out whether authority can actually be trusted or to be suspicious of authority, you'll find sixes questioning a lot. The last type in our head triad is our fun sevens. Sevens are talkative. They use a lot of words typically in conversation. They're verbose. Sevens are playful, they're high energy, and they will blush, brush off seriousness in the favor of fun. I think about one of the Enneagram gurus I follow on YouTube, Tom LeHue. He claims himself to be a seven. And you know, I've seen him in action doing all sorts of funny accents, and just being just a lot of fun to watch, entertaining. Very seven. You can just tell that the body language and just how he comes off his energy is very seven. Finally, we've got the gut triad. We've got our eights. Eights, also in my tri-type, can speak too loud for what's appropriate at times. They speak in commands. They can be entitled to anger and aggression. Their speech is very direct and blunt. And eights will not apologize. They are prone not to apologize. It's not the most strong type within my tri-type, but I can relate to all of these. I think it comes back to how I was raised and the kind of 
environment I witnessed the dynamic between my parents. I felt that there was conflict in the home. So eight is definitely in my tri-type. I'm just naturally all these things. I'm not going to apologize unless I've thought about it. I naturally speak directly and loudly at times, and I will confront and show my anger if I feel that I've been mistreated and I've been wronged. And I'm not afraid to give commands. Not at all. Finally, nope, not finally. Next, we have type nine in the gut triad. Nines will allow space for others in conversation and they will delay after being posed questions with, I don't know, or I haven't considered that. My father, my dad is a nine. I believe that. He is so, he, in most contexts, he is very easygoing. And he's receptive and he will let others take the lead in conversation and just kind of mold himself his conversation around the other person as if to cater to the other person. Nines tend to be a little spaced out their energy. It's like they're not really there. They're kind of ethereal. It's a very different kind of energy than a three or an eight who's very solid and it's like they're there. Their presence is very strong. Nines just kind of blend with the background, kind of blend with you. And that's why nines are so easy to get along with because they are so... pleasant, easygoing. And that's shown by their way of conversing with people. Finally, we have type one, my boyfriend. Stern, critical, dry, doesn't smile often or doesn't smile much. Thank goodness he has his nine wing and his heavy two wing. I don't think he can really see it in himself, but even though he's developed in his health, these are definitely his default states. I remember he might give a speech and in my opinion, I think that his presentation is formal, stiff, mechanical, and that I think that's reflected here. I would even describe his whole demeanor as generally more robotic than the other types. But of course that, that also has its plus sides because even though he still feels emotions, if he feels pain, then he can be really resilient with that discomfort or pain. It's really special when he does smile because he seems to not really smile too often. He's a very serious guy, even though he has lined up throughout his career. There you have it. We have the signals of every type on the Enneagram, not to be confused with 
if I look like this, then that's my type. But it is a factor in helping you consider your type, your wing, and your fix within your tri-type.